Hey, we gotta paint the tractor black now, baby. <laughs> Yo, that look good, man. Look at that. Hammerhead. Boy. Sick. God, that thing is sick, man. Okay, as we promised, now is the time we're about to unveil the new hammerhead. I've not seen it. I see just a tinsy wincy, but it's black. You can't really tell nothing. So I haven't seen it. Is there anything you want to tell me before I see it? Just, just get excited. Just get excited. I'm already excited. I woke up at three o'clock this morning. That's how excited <laughs> I was out here doing work. <laughs> so let's go take a look. It's right on over here. So here's the deal. Remember, this isn't just the regular old Lane Shark LS234. This is the hammerhead. This is the new one on the block, the new OG. So if you're wanting to know the major difference from what I understand, this is what I was kind of told, is that instead of having to get out of your tractor and make the adjustments to your Lane Shark going up, down, however you want to use it in whatever configuration, Apparently you don't have to get out and do that anymore. Everything is hydraulically controlled from the inside of your tractor. This is huge. Let's take a look. Oh, snap. You know I like the green. <laughs> oh, the green looks good, baby. Oh, wow. It's meant to be. Oh, wow. Okay. So, first off, this looks completely different. Yes, sir. Than the LS2, LS3, and LS4. You got a lot more going on here. The hoses are doing more. I obviously see the hydraulics. Yes, sir. Um, so did I kind of nail it, basically? The yeah, biggest, so you, this is hydraulically controlled. Yes, sir. So okay. you've got right here behind this big shield uh -huh. is your your hydraulic control valve. Okay. So on the normal lane shark, it just comes in from the tractor straight to the motor. Okay. So with this new one, we come into this control valve and basically whenever you get on the tractor, you'll hit the system on and that mm -hmm. just sends fluid up through this valve. So it's just in and out of this valve back in the tractor. Okay. You've got another button that's your motor start, which will send fluid to your motor to turn it just to start cutting. Got it. So if you want to move positions, you got to hit system on and then you've got your up, down, in and out. And so your in and out will basically this ram right here <laughs> will contract and the whole unit shifts. Shifts it out. So you can do like, um, you know, I've got a decent amount of road front frontage, a few hundred feet. Yes, sir. So one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I had covered was being able to take care of my ditches. And the other big thing is, and we've all experienced this, whether you're pulling out of your driveway or pulling out of a neighborhood or something, and you're trying to look down the road to see if a car is coming and you can't yep. because it's so overgrown. Yep. Um, as a law enforcement officer and an ex-firefighter, I can't tell you how many wrecks we worked and that was the, the yep. leading cause. So immediately, you know, super practical things as far as maintenance is concerned, but this is more than just that. Like this can actually, cause I'm gonna use it initially to, mm -hmm. for land clearing. Right. So can you help me understand, especially being that you know, when we started this video, we were talking about the fact that, you know, most of the dealers don't even know that this is capable of doing what it can do. I know it can assist me with the maintenance, but how do you feel it's going to do as far as far as land clearing is concerned, chopping down that? So again, as long as you're as long as you're cutting three inch and below, okay. clearing stuff here, you're not going to have a problem. Okay. It's whenever you get into the thicker stuff that you you really need something that's that's a little more powerful than this. Okay. So that's like what we talked about earlier, the, the continuous flow and then the, the GPM of the tractor. You don't have a lot of GPM to, it's the torque really that, that, that limits you. Sure. Because if you're trying to cut into something that's too thick, it's going to stall out. And that's sure. where the overheating comes in. Sure. So, but as far as going into three inch and below, you're going to, you've got to clear this. You can go directly in front of the tractor. You can offset it. So if you've got like an overhang that you don't want to get your tractor too close to, you can do that. It does go a little bit negative, okay. Uh, but again, the, the so like below grade. Yes, sir. So okay. the, the but the main feature of this of the Lane Shark company is cutting in the ninety degree position, cutting yeah. all those overgrown. That's legit. It's like what you're saying, clear where you can see traffic coming. That's right. And uh, or my shooting truck, lanes for hunting. Yeah, not have your truck get scratched up whenever yep. you're going in. Yep. Uh, so, but this like here, a lot of times when you're cutting 
with the lane shark is you'll cut and then a limb will fall and it's just perfectly where whatever position you're in, you can't cut it. <laughs> and so with this one, you can be cutting and you can hit the button and it'll lift it up. You cut that limb and you drop it back down and continue about your day. Well, I like it too, because again, I was up at three o'clock this morning and kind of looking at, and I actually saw the video of the new LS4. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out. Cause they have a couple more features. And one of the features that I liked um, was the fact that it's able to pass over the ground and, and kind of follow along with the terrain, which I think is a big deal. Uh, but that also lends itself to what we're talking about right here, because it's hydraulically controlled, if I'm cutting my ditch, you know, ditches aren't perfect. Right. They're not going to be at that perfect angle. I might need to make the adjustment or come up, pitch it up a little bit. I like the fact that I have the control. Yes, sir. You know, yeah, you and that's what I like about you, this. You lift it up a little bit and you're, you're in the perfect position all the time. Or just what I'm going to be using it for mainly land clearing, clearing those smaller saplings. The vast majority of our pop, uh, property, they were tree farming it. So a lot of the trees are young. Yep. Um, and I think they'll be perfect candidates for this. But uh, all right, enough about this stuff. I'm ready to get it on. Apparently I got to bring the tractor over. Somebody got to bring the tractor over here and get this thing off. Yes, sir. And then what are we doing after that? So we're going to install uh, what we call our C-Flow kit on your tractor. And that's continuous flow is what that stands for. Okay. So that is needed for any of our implements, whether it's the LS3, the LS4, or this one. You've got to have the C-Flow kit. So if you don't have a third function on your tractor, which you already do, it's a WR long third function. If you don't have that, we have our full C-Flow kit, which is the third function and the C-Flow and everything together. Okay. So you got to have that no matter what. But okay. if you buy a hammerhead, it will come with all the controls that's needed, all the hoses mm -hmm. that are needed to hook it to your tractor. Uh, it also comes, whenever you buy this, it'll come with the switch box that controls it. Okay. So right now on the, the three and the four, you buy the unit by itself, then you buy the kit that has all the hoses and controls. And so we're changing it up a little bit. So if you have, so if you have an LS4 already on your tractor with the continuous flow kit, you just buy the hammerhead and you have everything you need. And it's plug and play. Yep, you pu you'll pull the old box out. If you have the old switch box, put the new one in. You snip three wires, reconnect them. And then you have a harness that comes up here. So it's, we're trying to make it as seamless as possible, but Whenever you're doing something new, it's always there's always some things that you have to do that are a little little out of the, the norm, but we're trying to make it as easy and, and as understandable as possible. Well, so it looks very home. good. And just so you guys understand, like this is an extra new product. We weren't even sure if it was gonna be ready in time. So this is extra new. Make sure you're hitting that like button for us bringing you know, some incredible content like this to you. And also hit that damn like button for Lane Shark. They are incredible taking time out of their week to come up here, install everything and assist us with all this. This is legit, but for all the uh, Lane Shark owners already out there, I know a bunch of you guys are gonna see this video and you'll be like, damn, I need one. <laughs> but now you know, yes, all you have to do if you already have a Lane Shark um, is purchase the hammerhead. It should be plug and play. Well, wire and play, yep. but you're not really having to do the in-depth installation like we're doing today. Yep. But you definitely need your third function no matter what. And in order to use any laying shark, you're going to need a C-Flow kit. Yes, sir. C-Flow. See? Learned, learned a couple things today. <laughs> so we're going to go and grab the tractor. We're going to get this off the truck. We're going to hook in the C-Flow, right? Yes, sir. And then we're going to hook this up and get to, get to hear it, get to use it. Let's go. Hey, we gotta paint the tractor black now, baby. <laughs> Yo, that look good, man. Look at that. Hammerhead. Boy. Sick. God, that thing is sick, man. Look at underneath it. Look at underneath it. Yeah, man. Look at that. So this is what's swinging around and hitting whatever it is you're trying to cut. That thing got some weight on it. Hitting with some momentum. Bop, bop, bop. That's it. So I like it. You see the rubber on the back? Apparently what that does is as you're, you know, driving forward and cutting stuff up, it keeps 
uh, the back of it from getting hung up on stuff. So say a tree stump or, or something like that, um, having that rubber on the back keeps it from getting caught, which is awesome. I didn't even know stuff like that, you know, was a thing. I do remember seeing a lot of rubber pieces on the back, but dude, this is cool. This yeah, is I'm, cool. I'm, I'm very excited to get this out. I've been working, I came up with this idea September of 2020. Oh my. And I've just like- Four years. Had a hard time getting it to completion. Why is that? It's just time. Time. And uh, if I'm not interested in a project, it's hard for me to work on it. Okay. So I get to a, I get to a step where I'll figure something out yep. and then I can't see the path forward. Yep. So I just put it aside for a little while uh -huh. and don't think about it and then it comes to me. That's right. So we have, uh, I've built probably 12 prototypes. Yeah. And this here is pretty much the final version we're getting ready to put in production. You um, guys hear that? 12 prototypes. I've manufactured before. You don't really hear a lot of stuff like 12 prototypes you hear one or two especially with big big stuff like this i'm talking about little bitty small consumables big stuff 12 iterations wow yeah it's uh wow. it's, it's it's changed a lot since the beginning okay and uh one of the funniest things before we before we got the valve design like i was trying to find parts off the shelf and that wouldn't work so we finally got this valve designed for us but before we had that i had one you could literally pitch a baseball off of it because it shot it over so fast. Oh, wow. So these, ha okay. these have flow controls in it, so the movement of it, it's very slow <laughs> and controlled. Uh, so there'll be some good blooper videos that come out. Uh, so I, uh, and I don't mean to cut you off on, on the slow and control, but I like that because I've been doing a lot of research regarding the top heaviness of tractors and, and making sure that you have counterbalance and, and, and that kind of stuff especially so i want you guys to imagine i'm the tractor and i'm facing you right now it's in front of you but when you set that off and it's offset there's going to be some weight going off to the side so i love the fact that you have the type of flow control that you have because when it's out there and it's offset and that thing is out there jumping around it will give you the propensity to try to tip right. so that's extremely important extremely extremely important yeah, and this unit weighs a, a, about 100 pounds more than our LS4. Okay. So it is a little heavier, but we've tried to, I've tried to put all the weight on this side so it does counterbalance a little bit to ah. keep, it, keep it from tilting. And it's back. So if I'm not mistaken, the closer you are yep. to the, the, yes. the better, yes, right? Sir. So it can handle more weight. Okay. Yes, but you guys heard what he said. They tried to put as much over to the left side so when this entire lane shark is, what you doing, is uh, <laughs> hanging off to the side, it can balance it out just a little bit. He's training so he can replace you. Oh, he's the, I hope so, you better. Tell him, you know how to use the tractor. We'll, we'll let you uh, play with it a little bit later. Okay. I know how to start it. <laughs> That's right. Well, all right, well, we've got it on. Now we need to hook up the C-Flow kit. Then we can plug it in. You guys can see it work. That's all we care about. <laughs> Ain't that right, Ken? Uh, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so here's here I'm actually holding the hydraulic lines to the new hammerhead and the control wire. So this right here is what's going to control the hydraulic box. That's what's going to control it come turning on and on, mm -hmm. or on and off, on and on. And it also controls the hydraulics as far as the positioning. Yes, sir. But inside the cab, this is the box that you were referring to as far as how to actually do that. Correct. So you run through that. So real you've quick. got your system on, and mm -hmm. so what that does is it turns this valve on, and it sends fluid up into the control valve up here. So it's just okay. circulating. When you turn this on, it's just circulating fluid in and out. Okay. That way you can control it or turn the motor on. Ah, so, so we don't have to touch this and mess correct. with any spinning anything. Yeah, that's okay. that's one of the things that I wanted to be able to move this without turning the motor on in case yeah. you get stuck in a position. I want it to be safe so you're not putting yourself in danger. That's right. Uh, so you just turn the system on and then you can move it or you can okay. turn, turn the motor on right there. That's awesome. So we turn this on, we can adjust the position with it and turn it on and off. Yes, sir. And this is continuous flow. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure we make that difference when I was researching this, everybody that was using something similar, they were having to press and hold a momentary button yep. and they were having to let go of that button to turn it off. So they would 
turn it on for, I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, and then turn it off, and they were trying not to overheat it. Correct. But with this one, not only can you do that, which I think that solution, what I just explained, I think that's a great solution. You know, when you're, when you're innovating stuff like this, you know, I, I don't mind that. However, this is even better because now I can turn it on and it can stay on. Right. I'm not doing it on and off, but it's within reach. So if an emergency comes up, I can turn it off or something. Speaking of that, if it hits something real hard, you know, boom, does it stop? Or So if you hit something too hard with this, so on a, so on a rear mounted rotary cutter, you have your PTO that drives it and sure. they have shear pins in there. So if it hits something hard, it breaks that shear pin so that, and that PTO keeps keeps going, but the, mm -hmm. the actual uh, blades stop. Uh -huh. So with a hydraulic controlled implement, you have what's called a pressure relief valve. Mm -hmm. And that pressure relief valve is inside of the loader control valve down here. So whenever you hit something, that pressure spikes and there's a valve that, that pops open and allows the fluid to bypass this and keep circulating. Because uh... the, the hydraulic pump is, is connected to the flywheel of the tractor. Okay. So if the tractor's running, that, that pump's running. Okay. So it has to be able to keep flowing. That makes sense. And so all you do, if you run into something and the blade stop, you either lift it up off of it, back out. As soon as the obstruction is cleared, the, the blades will spin right back up. There we go. So cool. there's no more shear pin. It's just a it's just a pressure relief valve. And so you mentioned the shear pin. I remember learning about that. And this is again, as I'm researching my tractor. Um, and then I understood there was another kind that was like a clutch where it didn't break, but it yep. would, you know, it, to kind of save your PTO yes, and to do all that. So that was really what I was wanting to understand because it's not like a, if you're gonna hit something and it bogs it or stops it, it's gonna happen, it's a part of it. But I just wanted to know yes, what sir. should I look out for, you know, can it handle it, you know, yep. so it's good. We're good to go, we're yeah, good you'll, to go. You'll hear it and you'll know when it stops. And yeah. you, okay. Like I say, you just wanna avoid hitting stuff that's so big that, it's, that it bogs it down uh, sure. too much. Easy peasy. All right, well, that's awesome. I guess we keep going. So here's the deal, we are installing it. He goes, hey man, I gotta show you something. Let's listen to the big guy. All right, so first off, we're gonna start, since we already have the third function, we're gonna have to pull some stuff off to reinstall different brackets. So for this one, I always use the male as the pressure for every, every system I set up, the male here is always gonna be the pressure. And so we're gonna have to take this off and this bracket, and we're gonna reinstall this bracket but what I want to do is just put a zip tie on the pressure line here. That way I know that this is my pressure and I don't get them mixed up. And that really doesn't matter if we're doing a fresh install. Mm -hmm. But say you're used to using this button or that button to open and close your grapple, we want to keep it the same. That's Understood. All. Understood. So I'm just going to put a zip tie yeah, on that's this. That's a just big to deal. Keep, just to keep, uh, keep up with which one is which. Well, I really like that, you know, especially what you're talking about, you know, if you're already ready or excuse me, you're already used to the controls that you have. I'm not really trying to unlearn that right. and relearn at the same time. Uh, we do that a lot in firearms. You learn bad habits, mm -hmm. you're trying to unlearn them. Your body wants to go back to the old habit. Yep. So I like this idea so that if you're already used to the function, look, they're trackers. They got a thousand buttons. They do a thousand things. I try to keep it simple. Yes, so I appreciate that. Absolutely. But now you know, for when you're doing this at your house, you know what to do. That's a great tip. Anything else regarding that? Uh, that's it. I'm just gonna go ahead and break these loose. Okay. Uh, I, so yeah, another tip is to break this stuff loose. So we're gonna take the fittings off here, and then we're gonna take these nuts off. I'm just gonna take loosen them up first. Mm -hmm. You always wanna do that before you take this off. That way this works as your, it holds your work piece so you don't have to okay. worry about multiple tools and all okay. that stuff. Now, what he told me earlier um, was what he's doing is that's the third function kit that was installed when I purchased my tractor. He's taken off, uh, we can't use the bracket that came with those uh, because we're adding you know, the C-Flow and additional uh, hoses. So the new bracket holds like five different, um, different fittings and things like that uh, to accommodate what this new hammerhead could do. This is going to be legit. Now, Travis, what, you know, uh, a lot of people are gonna watch this. So, and I know a lot of them, because I know if I was on the couch watching this, my question is, is how long is this gonna take? You know, what can we expect if I'm doing this at home? You know, first tractor, um, is this easy enough, you know, where you could do it yourself? 
If if you're used to working with tools, yes. Okay. Um, so if you're mechanically inclined, you're good. Yeah. Okay. And so like prime example right now, so TYM and Branson have just merged. That's right. So stuff is changing mm -hmm. and nobody's really telling anybody. Mm -hmm. So perfect example right here is these holes. Well, these are slotted and these are not. So Yeah, we got close. It so this like doesn't it. match up, so we're okay. going to have to drill that out, which, okay. you know, something that most people can do. Sure. So just little things like that that you'll come across that you may have to you may have to work on. Uh, so okay. if, you're, if you're capable of handling stuff that's not planned, you should be fine. Sure. Okay. But I remember the, when I was thinking about doing it because <clears throat> I was like thinking I was going to have to do this myself and I knew I had to dump in the sump. So when we get to that part, oh, we're not even going to have to yeah, do we'll, we, don't, okay. we won't do that because our C-Flow takes care of that. And that's one of the big C. selling features of the, the new C-Flow kit is yep. it just ties into the stuff that's there. You don't have to go look for the sump. There used, you know, there's, there's a plug in the back of the rear end that we would have to tie into. Some tractors, it's super simple and it's right there that you right. can grab. Right. Some tractors have hard lines with banjo fittings and that's a nightmare. Okay. Because uh, banjo fittings are really tough to find like off the shelf. Okay. So this, like I say, WR Long, they have spent years designing all these kits. Mm -hmm. And luckily to make our stuff work, it's just adding a T and a couple extra fittings. But That's good. they've spent a lot of time making these kits where they're extremely uh, well designed and they're just easy to put install. So, I'm bringing it up because I'm a very much mechanically inclined. I've been racing since I was a child, building the engines and everything. But when you just buy, a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment and you, you just it it? got it hell no <laughs> now here here now let me i'm being completely honest i'll go and buy a fifty or sixty thousand dollars something and i'll do minor stuff but <clears throat> when we're talking about okay new tractor owner new tractor never done any of this before and on top of that i'm putting something on the tractor that's still very new mm -hmm. There's not a lot of reference. I can't just go on Google and look at a form and see what the last 50 people done. Right. There is nothing. So you're just kind of hearing bits and pieces. I didn't even see it on a particular Branson or TYM. So it's like, can I do it on right. that? And to be honest with you, it's such an important topic it can prevent you from buying it completely. Yeah. You know, uh, honestly. So that that is that is very true. Uh, the good thing is with our company, though, we have I got Logan and Ross. Mainly Logan is our our frontline service tech. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're actually willing to be patient and go back and forth with Logan, if you run into issues, he can take care of anything. If Logan can't take care of it, Ross is there. And then if Ross can't take care of it, you just throw the tractor away. That's right. <laughs> But hey, but that's hilarious, but that is awesome regarding peace of mind. Because when you're kind of going into uncharted territory, I told you guys earlier about the dealers didn't even know that this will work, mm -hmm. you know? So <clears throat> you're going into uncharted territory and you're kind of taking a lot of risk. Right. And, but these things are not cheap, you know? Like, um, it, it's good. I'm glad that we're going through this so that number one, the people that are watching know that, hey, if you're mechanically inclined, you can handle this all day long. But on top of that, if you run into a little bit of problems, you've got support right. and you got support from the manufacturer, not from the dealer that sold it. I appreciate that. Right. Uh, so keep that kind of stuff in mind with this, the lane shark and the setup that they have. You don't have to worry about dumping back into your sump. You don't have to worry about digging into the tractor a lot further than you really want to, especially on a new piece of machinery and especially on something that costs so much money. Right. This is a big, big, big deal. Yep. Big deal. All right, I ain't gonna hold you up, well, my bad. Say one thing is, <laughs> as far as if you do run into issues with this, mm -hmm. we like to get pictures and video tracing out everything. So if if you haven't bought a lane shark and you're thinking about it, just keep in mind, if you are installing this yourself, we, we want to help as much as humanly possible, but there are things we need. And so be patient with us and understand that because all we're trying to do is solve the problem. That's right. We get a lot of people that'll call in and they're, you know, they've been working on it for a couple hours and they, yeah. they're running something simple, so they're already frustrated. Yep. We, we try to disarm that as much as possible. Sure. But just be patient and understand we, we can't be here and see it, so we need pictures, we need videos, and we're going to go systematically step by step to, uh, to trace the problem out because 
it could be an electrical issue, it could mm -hmm. be a plumbing issue. Nine sure. times out of 10, whenever we hear the issue, we know the problem. Sure. But there are things that happen yeah. that you just have to be patient and we have to work through everything to get to a solution. Cool. So I'm just, be it's exciting to hear that, that if you, you know, you should be able to knock it out yourself, but if you hit a snag, hit them up, be patient, send them pics and vids. If you're trying to get it done, do that, you know, that's awesome. I, I, dude, this is this this is important because these are literally now I appreciate this. Obviously, you know, we're getting the red carpet and that's dope. But these were concerns that I had. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just replaying in my mind, like, man, I'm sure I'm glad that's working. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I did not want to do that. And going to the sump, you know, what if I didn't put enough hydraulic fluid in it because I'm running all these longer lines? There's so much that can go wrong. Yep. Now I'm dumping all this hot fluid back in, you know. That's this one thing. That, that's one thing also to keep in mind is always check your fluid once you're done installing. So oh. you already have the full kit on here. Mm -hmm. We've already ran this in the shop, tested it, so it's so full it's of got fluid. hydraulic. Okay. But in a in a new situation, which actually when you get a lane uh, a hammerhead, all the fluid will be in it because we we will test every single one of these okay, before good. they go out the door. I was just about to ask. Good. Yeah, but you always want to check your fluid levels whenever you install a hydraulic implement because you. Here in a minute, you'll see when we open this, there's going to be fluid that may leak out. So it's like minor, but cool. still, you always want to make sure that you got the That's proper good. amount of fluid. Yeah, that makes. And plus, the, the one of the biggest reasons for that, and this is something I'm getting from my racing days, we ran a lot of turbochargers on our uh, cars, and the oil is how we lubricate and keep it cool. So it's the exact same thing. So if you're low on hydraulic fluid, that could actually lend itself to higher temperatures. The more fluid you have, the longer it takes for the temperature to rise, so it's better for you. Okay. So not only can it mess this up, but it can also bring your temperatures up sky high, I'm sure, if the yes, fluid sir. level's not where it needs to be. See, I knew something. No. <laughs> boy, boy, well, let me drill, I knew let something. Let me drill this out real quick and you can- <laughs> That's uh, it though, that's all you get all day. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so our, our lines are labeled. We got return on this one. So you can usually just kind of look and tell what you need as far as which, which end. So you got a straight end on here, a 90 on this end. Since we already have 90s here, we're going to basically just kind of use deductive reasoning. Yep. So we're going to put this on. <laughs> so I lay, lay this back with that one. Okay. And then we're just going to take and put this one on. Come through here. Right so, there. all right, now we're going to switch you to the first person view camera so you can get in here. So ain't no excuses. <laughs> I'm talking about, well, I don't know how to. No, we got you up close and personal. Hope this fits in between oh, there, yeah, so it'll be, be perfect. So yeah. it'll flow nicely. I feel like I'm dressing wires, like when I'm doing wiring and stuff like that. Every, whenever you're, whenever you're doing a JIC fitting like this, mm -hmm. I always like to wiggle it, jiggle it so it'll tighten then, up. Cause some, cause it's basically like a uh, a tapered piece and then a cone that sits over it. So you want to wiggle it, make sure it sits down on there. Uh -huh. And then we'll, when we get done, we'll come back and tighten all that. You know what this reminds me of? And all the race car guys, AN fittings. That's exactly what this, yep. this seems a lot harder. The AN fittings are very soft metal, so you have to be right. careful. But that shake shimmy, I think so. Yep. Uh, but that shimmy and mm -hmm. that twist, exact same thing. So you can get it to actually be flat and get all the way tight, yep. or hand tight at least. So that's really cool. I eat, got that in, uh, and you guys can obviously see I got it in pretty easy. And I came right between the two existing ones, and then that's so that it can lay nice and flat. Now, <clears throat> this is very, very important, you know, if you're installing anything on your tractor to make sure you dress your lines and not, you guys mentioned it on some of your yep. videos on your YouTube keep channel. Keep them up, keep them protected. That's right, keep it up. Coming on the inside here, keeping it protected versus being out here. Mm -hmm. but. Keeping the same stuff in mind when it comes to the lane shark, making sure that these hoses are secure, especially when it's hanging out here and all that. Mm -hmm. I was able to find some too where people had them dragging. And look, I've only used this tractor a handful of times and I've been caught on everything. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. And, and it's so important because what happens when you rip this and you're in the middle of your 10, 15 acres, you don't have any hydraulic fluid. Yep. You're kind of just sitting there. Yeah, especially if you're not if you're not paying attention and you bust a line and then you've got your pump going, you, you don't kill it, you'll shoot all your fluid out. Oh my gosh. So well, you just always want to pay attention to what you're doing. Well, uh, let's not do that. <laughs> so we just, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to run all of these lines together. Mm -hmm. So we'll pull that line completely back out, that way we can trace it perfectly and okay. then we'll zip tie and dress all this up. Got it. 
Here we go. Boy. Big time right here. So is my uh, camera still recording, Jay? So what I'm doing, as you guys just heard them, we're gonna take the actual wiring that is going to activate the pump that's on your lane shark. And we wanna trace it along the same line, uh, way as the hydraulic hose here. We want it all to kind of fit nice. So we, yep. again, like we, we were talking about, keeping it nice and tight, keeps it out of the way. And uh, me personally, I feel like when it looks neat, it works better, <laughs> me personally. It's definitely, Definitely works better if it looks good. Exactly. Uh, I'm just gonna. You want to make sure to always cut your uh, zip ties at a 45. That way, whenever somebody else is working on it, they cut themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Little slice of roux. Yeah. I've caught myself on some, some zip ties. Listen. That somebody did before. Heck yeah! If you, especially if you don't flush it up. <laughs> but zip ties are your friend because they make everything look pretty. But this is going together real easy. Um, I like that it's a kit versus something that you're trying to, you know, make work. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that really has helped, you know, push us into a different level. Is because used to, I had I had designed kits for five tractors maybe, mm -hmm. and then the rest of them, you know, a customer would call in, say, "Hey, I've got a, a Branson 45, 4815. I need a lane shark." Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you got to call your dealer, make sure they know how to find the sum, make uh -huh. sure they can make hoses. Yep. And, you know, I can't tell you how many customers we probably lost because of that. Absolutely. Now Convenience they, is everything. Now they call in and they say what they have. We got a kit for it. We'll shoot it to you. And uh, you can do the install. The dealer can yep. do the install. And it just makes it a lot easier process. Agreed. Yeah, it's uh, when it's a kit, that's a thing. Again, you know, you're spending 50K, you know just depending on what you buy, I would say from, you know, 30 to $50,000 for your average, you know, subcompact or compact right. tractor. You know, I feel better when I'm installing things that were intended to work together right. versus something that you're trying to piece together. And I'm gonna tell you something, I come from the racing world and when you're <laughs> trying to race at a high level, you ain't doing nothing but piecing together, trust yeah. me. Uh, so you appreciate you know, every so often when you get a well put together kit, and I mean, not, it's put together and the stuff will work together. I mean, but it works well together. Yes, sir. How easy was it to install that? Can I stop around in here? Yeah, I would stop right okay. there because our return is going to end up in here in this corner. Okay. So we'll get that leaked in there here a little bit. So you guys see what we did? Is my camera still going? Yep. So what we did, guys, we followed the original lines that were coming down. This is gonna ensure that they stay protected, but then it looks good, you know what I mean? Nobody wanna roll up, you know, looking <laughs> half ass. Like, what's going on with your hydro lines? They all over the place. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna tie everything into the valve here. Now, one of the things that I've noticed on this tractor, it just has the third function installed. And so when that happens, a lot of times these two lines will be reversed. So you have to feed this from the power beyond into the, the valve and then out of the power beyond to the back of the tractor. And if you'll look, this line here is the power beyond and it's feeding into the, the side here. And maybe we can put a, a picture up to show, but this is the T for the tank side. Mm -hmm. And so it's coming in, it's, it's going in reverse. So you've got your pressure is coming in your return side and your return side has, or your pressure side has your return going out. <laughs> so again, when it's just a grapple, it's not that big of a deal. But when you have the C-Flow kit, you would basically be trying to return the fluid from the lane shark into the pressure side of the valve. Okay. And so it's just gonna it's just gonna deadhead, and nothing's gonna work. You'll see the motor of the lane shark okay. just barely move. Okay. Not on this one because it's not activated, so you turn on. But on a hammer on a LS4 or LS3, it'll do that. Okay. So anyway, if we have to. Pull these two lines off, we'll install this T, and then this right here is our check valve that goes on our return line. Mm -hmm. And so we'll install all this on the T side, and when we're doing that, we're gonna reverse these lines to make sure the flow is proper. And that's what I was gonna say. So they are reversed, yep. and, and you did say earlier, like this is a common thing yep. that you guys see. So when you guys, I had my third function uh, installed at the dealer, um, but apparently this is something that's fairly common. 
so I love the fact that, yeah, it was a mistake, but it can be remedied. Yeah, like I say, quickly. when you just have a, a grapple on here, it's not, you're never going to know. Like, okay. So we have people, and it's always when it's just a C flow kit. Like if, okay. this, if this is already installed and they're just doing a C flow, we'll have the, the customer will call in and say, hey, when I turn this on, the tractor sounds like it's locking up and the motor, I can see it twitch. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, we'll send us some videos and we'll usually get to this point and realize it's reversed. Sure. All right, so what we've done is this is our where our turn, return is coming in. You can see our T in here. So this is the, the fluid that's going out of the valve back into the back of the tractor. This line was connected over here, so we've reversed it. And so this is our Power Beyond. So it's coming out of the Power Beyond port, feeding into our pressure side. So now everything will flow properly and won't have any, shouldn't have any issues with the, the port. So everything is going great, except for all the sh they broke. <laughs> no. Hey, if you ain't breaking nothing, you ain't doing nothing. That's right. If you ain't breaking, but it did break for real, but no, just, no it did. But the uh, super clean install. Homeboy act like he knows what he's doing. You know his ass watched YouTube last night. Hell out. yeah. I stayed at Holiday Inn Express. Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> <laughs> the harness that goes to the front of the tractor, we've got these uh, blade connectors. So you can actually run the harness through the floorboard if you need to. And they're all color coded. So you just run it, plug each one in, and that's all you gotta do. But you gotta make sure to run it the right way the first time. So the male side is coming from the switch box. And then the female side is coming from the front of the tractor. And you'll notice the longest wire that we have on this side is the shortest wire on this side. That way, whenever we put it together, there's not some giant uh, ball of connectors all in one spot. Smart. So this one here is going to be the, re this is the supply. Oh, okay. It's always the mail that Got it. points the fluid. And then that's your green is always going to be your return. And then we got the harness here. And that just clicks that in. Pop your ass in that tractor and fire it up. All right, listen, we are done. We are done, wrapped up. Lane Shark, Hammerhead on the front, plumbed and ready to go. Thank you, Trav. Yes, sir. This dude is the man. I was told salt of the earth, and I agree with that 100%. Uh, incredible dude, incredible company. Let me explain something to you. Give me five seconds. Um, it's a great product. Forget the product for a second. What matters are the people and the company, the people that make up the company. And here's why. That product is going to fail one day, but I want to make sure I'm dealing with good folks so that they'll take care of me. They're going to honor their product. They're going to take care of me like they're supposed to do. And I truly feel like that this is the case with Lane Shark. And I feel like that is something that you need to be paying attention to uh, in a serious manner, this stuff is gonna break. We're out in the woods, we're cutting things up and doing that, it's gonna happen. You wanna deal with a company that's gonna have your back. It's huge, and if this doesn't show you that, the fact that the owner and everybody else comes all the way up here from Florida and does this, hey man, hats off to you guys, all three of you. All three of them are stand up, and I just feel blessed and privileged to be in this situation. So, without any further ado, I'm crank this thing up and I want to see it work. We're about to see this thing work. Remember, with the hammerhead, I ain't got to get out no more. <laughs> so we can make all the adjustments from the comfort of the inside. You ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Can I fire it up all fire the way? Fire up. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Now, you guys are watching me here. We're going to switch to this first person view because I want you to see this thing slide out. It's so smooth and graceful. Can I bring it up just a little bit more? Yeah, time? bring it up that way. Whenever you lift it, it'll uh, stay off the ground. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, so we want to bring it up some. And he said we want to bring it up so that we can lift it up high enough so when we swing it out to cut this way. What position do you call that? When it's so that that's uh, the vertical position. Vertical. Call it the vertical or the 90 degree position. Okay. Uh, so just vertical and horizontal is just kind of what we call it. 
Okay, so you have directly in front, offset, yep. then vertical. Yep. Those are the three. Those are the three main positions. Three main up. positions. So right now it's in front. This is the orientation it's going to be when you're doing the most amount of work. Now he's bringing it down just a little bit. So now I hit. Your system. Oh, so we turn it on here. Yep. System. And then on. You can move the positions however you want. So you okay. Move it out first. So we're going to go out. So what you guys should see is it shift from here to over here. So if you are maintaining your ditches, keeping them nice, mowed, and cut, this is what you do. You shift it over to the side. You can stay in the road where it's nice and level. You don't have to worry about being on that, you know, that incline. All right, so I've got it turned on. Let's go out. Here we go. Oh, my. Nice and smooth. Ah. Oh. Check them out. Check them out. Now, obviously, you can see, you know, the weight shifted over just a little bit but it's nowhere near as much as I thought it was gonna be. And it's not as much as kind of what I saw on YouTube. So I can appreciate you having all the hydraulics and the mounts over on this side. You can tell it's definitely helped the counterbalance. Now, I wouldn't recommend y'all do it, but Travis hopped on it. I was like, so how is it with the weight? <laughs> and the tractor handling, he hopped on it and was jumping on it and it was fine. So now I have the uh, hammerhead in the offset position. Now, if I want to kick this thing up to the vertical or a 90 degree position so I can keep everything trimmed back up against the, the wood line or say you do a lot of hunting, you want to keep your hunting lanes open, I'm going to hit this button right here. I can go up or down. Let's go up. Oh, man. From the inside, baby. Yeah. And we're done. And one other thing. Uh-oh. So when you're in this position, if you're getting in some narrow lanes, oh, okay. one thing the other, the other one couldn't do, you know, you can you can bring this in. What? So, so you can you cut can... the same oh. width as the tractor. So you can get it in the 90 degree position all the way up to there. Now you don't want to go too much further because <laughs> the arms will bind with the deck and you can you can break it if you really try. Okay. But you can see, so I can see out here, you can't see it as easily, but I can come all the way to right there. So from what I see right here, it is right in line yep. with the arm. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I probably won't come any further in than the tire right. um, because I don't want to be anywhere near it binding or anything like that. But I mean, hell, it could come in pretty far. Oh, yeah. But I didn't even know that it did this. I really thought that it had to stay out there. And for the new tractor owners and, and of course, the experienced tractor owners, you know, we understand, you know, how the loads work. You know, the further we are away from the tractor, you know, the harder it is to handle the load. You know the closer in the easier so i like this say if i'm on kind of a slight incline i can't do anything to avoid that bringing this in a little bit is going to help yeah, with that teeter totter absolutely so this so let me ask you a question with the previous design the different positions were locked right meaning it yeah, goes all the way it, and stops yep there was no adjustment not as far as the, the in and out. You could adjust okay. the angle, like, because it, it rotated on a single pivot on the back plate. So you could get it in this 90 and you can rotate it like this. Oh, okay. So that's one thing obviously this can't do. It's just, there's there's give and take with, with both sure. designs. But with this one here, I mean, it's just the, the ease of use is where, where all your yeah, I, I, I don't have to get in and out of the tractor, but it gives me the ability to refine. Yep. And this is what we were talking about earlier. And this is something, let me cut this off for a second. Would it be okay? Yeah. So here's something we were talking about earlier. You know, in an ideal world, we would be farming and doing all the tractor work on flat ground where it's easy. But especially with what I'm having to deal with, and a lot of you as well, I'm developing my property. You know, so I'm going in and cutting in roads. I'm going in and having to work with the land the way that it is. And there's nothing flat about it. We have decent land. It's got a nice, gentle slope. But, you know, whether I'm using this to act for active land clearing or if I'm using it for maintenance, which it'll be used for both, having that fine, the, the, the refinement is a big deal. And it being a touch of a button, I'm not having to get out. We all, when we're keeping it real, if we were still having to get in and out of this tractor, there's certain things that we're going to overlook or not do. It's, we're human. You know, but the fact that I actually have the ability to do the refinements from the tractor, make all the adjustments that I need, 
this is gonna help me get work done. Every time I gotta get out and get back in, that's a couple minutes, three minutes of time that I've lost. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that, having to get out from this seat and then go back there. I've been doing mainly backhoe work, you know, uh, knocking down trees and digging up root balls. So I've done a lot of moving around, you know, and getting in and out. It takes time. In a day, you can get in and, out of, in and out of this tractor 20 times. So we're not talking about getting in and out of your car three, four times a day. It's over and over and over again. This is a really big deal. Other thing, it's on the front of my tractor. Uh, I've already mentioned this a bunch of times. You're going to hear from the dealers that you're buying your tractors from, you're going to hear them say that this is not possible. Obviously it is. And what they're talking about is the ability to run brush cutters on the front of tractors. And the reason why is because the low GPM, the low hydraulic GPM rate. Most of the time you're gonna see this types of stuff on the front of skid steers. They have much higher GPM. But now you know for a fact, not only can you do it on tractors, but you can more than likely do it on yours. We're going to check out Lane Shark. Before we wrap this up, Travis, can you tell them how they can find you? Uh, so our, we're most active on Facebook, but we have our website, it's LaneSharkUSA.com. Uh, but we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, and you can give us a call at 850-610-2870. And uh, we appreciate y'all watching. Absolutely. And remember, make sure you guys like this video. We want to pump it up. This is a debut of the new hammerhead from Lane Shark. Thank you guys so much for watching this. We really, really hope that you learned something. Travis, thank you so much for coming out. Hey man, you guys you are legit. Y'all are I really legit. Appreciate it. Uh, guys, you know how it is. We love you. Peace.